Hey everyone, this is Zoraz, I'm not casuals. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the human race in Art of Conquest, and I'm gonna give you some of my tips about the commanders, the units, and the items in order to get further and get really good rewards in the early game of Art of Conquest. I also want to add that we have officially partnered with Lilith Games, the makers of Art of Conquest, to become content creators and we have partnered with them in order to make content for you every week from now on as well as we will have some special redeem codes for you guys as well as some other nice perks so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for us to give you some really really good guides and some extra rewards for you to enjoy. So first, I'm going to go over the heroes, especially the ones that you start with. So as you know, you start with Avril, Avalon, and Vega. Those are the ones that you really have at the beginning, as well as Virion eventually unlocks quite early into the game. And you also get Gazul and Grimms, but those are not humans. But as you saw, four of the commanders that you start with are humans, and specifically Avalon and Virion have boosts for some of the best humans troops. So, this is what I'm going to go over. First of all, of course, Avalon is probably your number one commander that you want to boost as much as possible, especially early on. Reason for that is that he can both summon archers and has archer mastery, which are amazing abilities because they boost some of the best units in the game for humans, which is archers. As well as you have Ardent Aura and Warhorn, which are human buffs for health as well as attack speed. Now, humans, as you can see here, all friendly humanoids have their health increased with this ability. Now, every human unit is a humanoid. Now, some of the other races also have humanoids, so this applies to them as well. But in the current case of human, it is really amazing because it is all of the units. So if you are a low spender or you are free to play, now I would recommend you stick to humans for as long as possible because you can get through most of the content without having to do anything and you already have some of the commanders and heroes unlocked that you need in order to do all of that. So obviously at the beginning of the game you will probably want to have Aru Volley to do some damage and kill some of the mobs at the beginning but once you get like level 20-25 heroes I recommend switching to full archers. Archers are the best unit for damage in the human race. So both the summon archer ability and the archer mastery ability have to be upgraded as high as possible whenever they can. As you can see now, I can't until I'm level 30, so they are maxed out. Now I've spent other points in Ardent Aura and Warhorn. Now Natural Leader is very good to get one point on because it brings another army to the field, but the Bronze Supply Cap is not useful otherwise for the purpose of fighting. Now, as you see here, if I do this, I have another spec that has natural leader uh, to 3 out of uh, 5, which is the maximum I can do for now. This is for when I want to train units. I've talked about this in my previous video, so this is not something I'm going to go over again. But as you can see, you have a few spec you can change, as well as if you don't have access to as many spec or you have uh, messed some of them up, uh, you can always respec once per day for free. So I recommend, as I said, to max out these abilities. Now, when you get to um, this level 8, you will be able to summon the gold troops. So that will be making a major difference. You can summon an entire army of gold archers as well as you're boosting them. Plus you bring your own archers. This is really what is going to be the brunt of your damage. And this is what I would focus on on Avalon 100%. Now, as far as items go, um, obviously this is the one of the first set that you get. It makes that summon units stay longer in the battlefield and gives a lot of the command stat. Now, if you can look at the abilities here, it says the command is what boosts this ability. Same for mastery here. Actually, same for all of his ability. So, for Avalon, the main ability is command. That's why most of my items have command, as you can see here. And this set is basically made for a general, as you see a hero class general, which is what Avalon is, and has a lot of command itself on the items. Now, you will eventually get some better items. Um, I, as here as well, you can see that I can use the Marcher Mastery in item instead. So this is my other point. When you play these champions, you want to use these plus one items. Um, of course, right now I'm not using it because um, I'm kind of waiting to have better gear here to equip instead of the helm and the chest. And as of right now, I can't summon the gold units yet. So I find that 5 and 6 right now is good enough. 
Um, of course, upgrading a little bit more at 30 will be good. Maybe when I get this at 30, then I will use it and I will jump from 5 to 7 and that will be a big boost. Now, I also have this, which summons Archer plus 1. Now, I got this just by doing dragon stuff. I didn't even buy it or anything special. It just happened to have. So, it's not that hard to get some of these items. You'll get them eventually from playing the game in a few weeks. So I would focus on having these items that boost because Avon is not going to be a fighter. He's going to be a buffer and a booster. So you want to have as many of these as possible. And when you unlock the other sets in the future, you'll also have these items instead of this. Now, if we go to Varian, um, he is very similar to Avalon, but for swordsmen instead. Now, swordsmen are your tank units for human. They're amazing. So I would also recommend that you make Varian one of your priorities in terms of how many items and experience tomes you're going to be using. You want to have Avalon and Varian at the strongest possible level because they are going to be two of your main heroes, especially until you buy new heroes. So again, the same kind of logic applies. Summon Swordsman and Swordsman Mastery are your main ability. See, there we go. I just got one more point. Now, I would also recommend that if you have this kind of situation, you go in your item and you use the item uh, ability increase for this hero. And I would give him five of them. And I would get this to the next level as soon as possible. You want to focus these abilities because this will make your army and your commanders much stronger. Now, also, Virion has a Resurrection, which basically revives this light infantry or infantry unit that you have and he also revives them passively during the fight so Virgin is a very very good commander in terms of having swordsmen you really should be maxing him out as well as Avalon they are amazing now Virgin also has amazing buffs that boost uh, damage when they have morale buff for all units so this applies for everyone which is also why Virgin is an amazing champion even if you're not human as well as Lionheart Blade, which makes him do damage and heal himself. So that is if you make him a fighter. And this ability basically gives him an invulnerability shield for a few seconds. So these abilities, I'm not maxing because I'm using him as a buffer, as I said, for Swordsman. But Sir Averion can be played many different ways. So you will never go wrong by investing in him. Now, one of the last ones, Vega, you also have at the beginning. Now, she buffs Priestess. Priestess are very good unit but you don't really need to have their damage and health increase because they're not really damage dealers nor are they supposed to be taking damage so they don't really supposed to have health uh the thing with priestess is they stay in the back line and they heal that is their main purpose so it is not very useful to do this but vega has the best heal in the game this is absolutely amazing 440 uh, heal per second for 25 seconds now, this doesn't work on these units, obviously, but it works on every human unit. So, you want to max her out. This is what I've done. She's at 4 out of 5 because I have an item. As I said, items are amazing for them. Like, this item, Favor of the Sun God, plus 1, is the best item you want for her by far. As well as uh, other ones just basically boosting the magic ability because that is how she gets more healing. Now, this item as well, healing efficiency plus 20%. If you get this item, get it on Vega as soon as possible. And as you can see, I also have this item, which gives a little bit more AP and will give you another heal. So she is basically an amazing healer. And once you level this item up, you will make her even better. As you see, healing increases even better. So she is your healer. She works for every race that has humanoids, but humans, she is the best at. You want to max out that ability 100%. As well as saving lives makes you take less injury. But you can also go for heal and mana barrier, which are kind of like a shield against ranged units. And a heal, just it's a heal. And if you get healed, you can get boosted healing, which basically makes them uh, buffed after she got healed. But for me, I'm focusing on this for now because I don't have the ability points to get everything. But eventually, when you do, all of the healing abilities she has are amazing. She is absolutely great. Again, you will not go wrong by boosting her. Now, lastly, for Averil, she is also a human hero, but she doesn't buff any special unit. But she does have Blizzard, which is a very strong damaging ability, especially early in the game. So I recommend that you make her a Blizzard person, like a Blizzard uh, caster. And you will want to get a one point or two in here for more uh, damage, basically. And Rapid Cast, you basically want to get one time because it makes you be able to cast her spell twice. So especially in content that makes your ability free, having double Blizzard can help you because it freezes unit and makes you uh, have some damage and prevent damage to your unit. As well as Ice Wall will be an ability that will be very, very good in the future because it basically blocks uh, Cavalry Charge. So um, right now I'm using her really as a Blizzard person because I have unlocked some really good caster commanders. So I'm not focusing on Averil so much, but she is... If you're not going to have any other commander for a while, you're not going to spend any money at all. 
as she will be your main main ca spellcaster for a long time and she does a very very decent job at it now i would use my um, magic items on vega first for the heal but you will unlock a lot of items and unlock of uh, a lot of damaging ability like this basically make her stronger and you can see i have rapid cast plus one on this item as well as these just have a lot of uh, magic ability on them and eventually you'll have this set which is volcanic and you will do more damage against summoned units so against people who summon archers and stuff with avalon she will help or you can also have this monsoon set which makes that she can cast ability faster during the fight and as well this item is uh, the spellcaster uh, item so it will make your ability uh, lower cost more damage eventually so she is your main spellcaster for the free to play in the beginning she's amazing she does very well with every races but especially human and i recommend you also invest in her when you have the chance if you don't have any other commanders so now moving on to units or army um as we said we have this archers and this light infantry and cavalry and the clergy all have a commander that boosts them now, the units you're going to be focusing on is line infantry, which is archers, and light infantry. Because, first of all, heavy infantry, while they're very good, there is no commander that boosts them. So, they're not going to be the best at the beginning. Now, eventually, during the game, they will become very strong, especially because they are good against big units. So, they have a very, very important role. But, as I said, the focus will be on this for damage and this for tanking, with some other units and heroes behind to support, such as healers and calves and heavy infantry. Now I'm going to go through the units quickly just to show you what their role is. So as I said, you should focus these guys and this is the ones that you should have as gold units at the beginning because that was that is going to be making your content faster and easier. Now these guys basically reduce the damage taken from long range units by 50%. Now that is absolutely amazing. This is why you want them at gold at the beginning as well as they will never morale collapse so they'll never run away so this is just absolutely great now they're a human unit and as well as they have when they're resurrected they get more health and damage and as you saw with virion you can resurrect them so they are one of your main unit they're super tanky they don't take damage from long range and uh, they're just great now uh, the same thing applies to the silver ones they just don't have the resurrection one so they're still excellent tanks you really should have specialize in this your research should go in them they will carry you through the early game very easily secondly archers uh, of course they're a long range unit and as you can see here they do a lot of damage and they have a lot of range so they're very safe they stay behind your line of uh, swordsmen and they just do pump damage like they attack so fast it's crazy <clears throat> now they also kill commanders very easily so it is very good to have them because a lot of people use commanders in the front line sometimes uh, you will basically be able to snipe them down uh, in general they just do most of your damage they're just amazing um there's nothing more special than that obviously avalon will be one of your most boosted commander because you get so much free stuff for him at the beginning so you will see that they will carry their weight and do all the damage you need from them they are the what you use for damage as i said so i would definitely have them as your secondary gold unit as i am doing right now i'm having two marches of this and hopefully two marches of this pretty soon now um, we just looked at this. This is basically the same thing, but a bit less range and less uh, boost. But they're still very good. Now, the Spearmen. Now, these guys are absolutely amazing, but very situational. So, at the beginning of the battle, they throw a spear that stuns enemies and deals damage and increases damage dealt by them. So, I really like them in the back line. Maybe one or two troops of them. Because you can place them strategically where the unit or the enemy has a special units that you don't want to deal with or that you want to kill fast or even commanders. Even though in PvP you won't know where the commanders are. They are very useful to have because that ability really, really shuts down the front line. Especially the heroes in the front line for the first few seconds of the battle. They can't cast abilities and they'll take extra damage. It's really, really good for that. Now, they're not the tankiest unit. And they don't do any damage, really, unless they are doing large or massive units. This is what they're good for, and specifically the charge of cavalry. So cavalry, when they start the fight, they charge in. Now, that is a very good ability, except against them. If you charge into a hoplite, you will die. The cavalry almost dies instantly. So this is their role. You will place them in the front line if you know your enemy has cav charging in. So in PvE content, you will see the enemy's army. If you have cav, just put them in the front line. They'll kill everything instantly. 
If you're doing PvP, you can have a few of these units maybe in the back line to try and throw the spears. But other than that, they don't have a major role unless you're going against big bosses where you're going to use, uh, they're going to be large and massive, so you're going to be using them extensively for that. Now, lastly, I want to go through uh, the support units such as the Crusader, which are the Cav. Now, as we said, they are, first of all, large units, so they take damage from units that are against large, so be careful of that. They die very quickly to spears and other units of other races that are against large. As well, they have the Thunder Charge. So at the beginning of the fight, if the enemy doesn't have any kind of spear line, they will just go and charge into the mass of your enemy's units, such as footmen, for example. And the charge itself will knock a lot of units back in the field, as well as kill a lot of units from the charge. It will destabilize the first front line of your enemy, and then you can go through with your stronger units and mess everything up. So they are also very situational, but when you have no enemy countering you with spears, they will do an insane amount of damage, so I also recommend using them. Again, it's situational, they're not the brunt of your army, but they will play a very important role in the game. Now, the last unit I want to talk about is the clergy, the healers, or the priests. Um, they are absolutely amazing at supporting your enemy, uh, at supporting your troops. Now, the main reason they are amazing is because their third research gives them ability to cure poison and give poison immunity to your units. Now, it doesn't show here, but if we go in the research here, I will show you right now because it's that important. This ability right here. The heal ability grants two seconds of poison immunity. Now, why is that so good? Especially against Lich, the undead race of this game. Uh, basically, their spiders just do AoE damage of poison and it will shatter your backline. It will shatter your units. They'll lose morale. They'll run away and it does a lot of AoE damage. Now, with these units, you counter that completely. They heal and prevent poison for two seconds. They are absolutely amazing. They're anti-lich, basically, as well as the Holy Blast basically kills the undead units in a huge AoE and stuns them eventually. And you'll gain more and more ability as you research these units further. So, they are absolutely amazing, but most specifically against lich. Now, you can still bring one or two of these units against other races, but they really, really shine against lich. They will carry you against lich like crazy. You would even want gold of them if you're going to go against this because the gold unit of this has basically an AoE heal when they heal. It's even better than their heal. So it's it's really an amazing unit and it's anti-lich. So, of course, the last unit is Catapult. Now, they're nothing special. They're only good to siege and to break the wall so that the units on the wall don't kill your units. And as well, you have the Angel if you're a governor of a city. Now, the Angel is hit and miss. It takes a lot of space, doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does a lot of AoE and heals humanoids so it has a spot not everybody can have it of course so i'm not going to go too long into it but it is basically a very good healer unit so you can definitely use it and play with it now it would have to be tested if it's better than having more un uh, heroes and more units but at the beginning if you have this and you don't have a lot of heroes it will have a role to play it is a very good unit as well so this kind of concludes my guide for humans. I'm basically just trying to tell you that you really should focus this unit and this unit as well as the heroes that go with them. And that is how you're going to get through a lot of the content early game. Now, remember the usage of your other units, such as the spears and the calves and the healers, they will have their role to play. So just try and evaluate, try and test it out. When you play the game, you'll learn from your mistakes. But if you focus these two units, you will go very far and you will have a lot of fun progressing through the game so guys thank you for watching this was my human early game guide i'm going to come up with more human related videos because i think it's the best race to be playing if you're early in the game free to play or lower spender this is what you're going to be playing for a long time they are very strong especially even late game they're played by many many big players they're an absolutely great race uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks about them so i'm going to come up with some videos shortly about their formation other commanders that go well with them, as well as some other tips and tricks about the units and placement and item sets once you unlock some of the item sets that make these units even better, especially with the right heroes. So make sure to subscribe and drop a like if you would like to see these videos, as well as check out our playlist for Art of Conquest, where more and more videos for beginner-friendly content is going to come up. I would also like to uh, say thank you to Lilith Games because we are official content creators and we have partnered with them to make Art of Conquest videos with you guys and for you guys every week. So stay tuned for that and join the official Art of Conquest Discord for access to a lot more videos and a lot more content and a lot more help from the amazing community of this game. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.